Hi there, it's Denise Donaldson with Safe Ride News, and I just wanted to do a quick follow-up on my information about belt shortening clips. So I have some supplies here. I have a couple of clips that are familiar to CPSTs. I have some belt webbing, and I have a ruler. I want to talk first about the, the clips that I have here. This one on the right, that is a locking clip. It comes with car seats, or you can get it from the manufacturer and it's used for one specific pur purpose, and that is when you have a lap and shoulder belt with a retractor that only locks in a crash, and when the latch plate is free sliding. It holds two pieces of webbing together as a pre-crash positioner so that when a crash happens, your lap belt stays at a nice short length to hold the car seat. This bigger clip is what we call a belt shortening clip in the child passenger safety world. This clip is made by automotive companies like Ford, Toyota, GM, and it is made for the specific purpose of taking a belt that has a sewn on latch plate, whether that's lap and shoulder or lap belt only, and a retractor that only locks in a crash. So again, this one is for where the latch plate is not free sliding, but rather sewn on, okay? I have a whole video on this on the website, which I hope you've already watched, but I was inspired today to make an additional video to just warn you about some of the hacks that I've learned about that are online for ways to do this. There is one specific way to thread and to use this kind of a clip to do what we call belt shortening in the field of child passenger safety. The purpose, again, is when you have a particular kind of belt system that cannot lock around a car seat, and you must use that system for a car seat, then you're gonna use this kind of a clip to shorten the belt off, meaning you're gonna take the webbing that is very long and figure out by trying it around your car seat how much of the webbing you need to lop off to make point A reaching to point B where you buckle it in the correct length to hold your car seat. So you take that lopped off piece, your shortened belt, and you thread the webbing exactly like you would for a locking clip, but now we have lopped off a bit of the webbing, and the idea is now that this would be the correct length to hold the car seat. So we're taking that loop part to do a locking, locking step. So right now, the belt webbing could slide. So I'm gonna take part of the loop, bring it over the top, and thread it through the fingers, okay? So now my lopped off part has been locked into the, the belt shortener as well. And this is a very strong and approved way from the vehicle manufacturer to take one of their belts that is inappropriate for holding a car seat and taking the anchor point to the, pretend that's the latch plate point, making it the right length to hold a car seat, okay? Again, watch the video uh, I've already done that shows this actually being done with a uh, car seat on a demonstrator seat. The, th the reason I'm doing this additional webinar or this additional um, video is to uh, address something I've seen online, which is a, um, a an so-called easier way or a hack to do this shortening. When you get the, the length this long and say it's too long or it's too short and you want to redo it, um, as I say in my video, you do have to undo your work and adjust how much you've lopped off, either shorten or lengthen it, and then relock it and then rebuckle the belt. So those are some steps you do have to do. The question that was asked of me and what I see is, is actually implied is okay online is to instead of, of, of actually changing your loop to fold over and thread the webbing through this way. That's why I have a, a um, ruler here is because it shows that this does indeed shorten it more um, and so would that be an easier way than having to readjust your loop? And the answer to that is, besides the fact that that's only gonna change the length in shortening it by one inch, and that's you know unlikely to be exactly what you need to do, but the thing that's even more scary about 
that particular supposed hack is that if you'll note here, even without a crash, with just my pulling, I can still slide, even though it has been threaded through a third time, that has not locked the belt. I can slide the webbing through. So clearly the forces of a crash would very readily make that additional slack that we've supposedly locked out of the system reintroduced into the system altogether. So I um, just want to say, be careful what you see suggested online and uh, just note that it's very important when you're doing belt shortening because you're lo lopping out slack using uh, an approved from the manufacturer of the vehicle device to do that. You wanna make sure you use the correct clip, even though you could possibly thread it through a locking clip. This again, just a pre-crash positioning device. In the forces of a crash, the little fingers could bend and release all the webbing. So this is never to be used for belt shortening. It needs to be the one approved from the manufacturer and you wanna make sure you do the locking of the belt in exactly the way that has been described by the manufacturers of the vehicle with uh, taking the part that you've um, lopped off and folding it back over through the fingers. And unfortunately, if you have to trial and error that to get it just the right length, that's just something that you're gonna to have to undo and redo um, because there really isn't a hack to do that more easily.